Welcome to the show, guys. We got an exciting one here for you. I'm online with Jimmy the Maverick, and we've got six deep sleepers here for you. Welcome to the show, Jim. Excited to dive into this episode. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm ready to go, counselor. Uh, had a nice weekend. How about yourself? I'm excited, man. I mean, we are so close, guys. Time of this recording is August, Monday, August 21st. Man, I mean, it is just flying by. We pretty much got, what, a couple more weeks? I think like 16, 17 more days till the season starts. People are doing their drafts. I'm getting you guys ready. Jim's getting you guys ready. And in this video, we're talking about six deep sleepers. And I'm excited to dive into this, Jim, man. I mean, we are just so close. At this point, I want just I want the season to be here. That's where yeah, I'm yeah, I know. It's it, we're we're right at that point, man. This is this is basically it, and uh, we should also plug that we're going to be live on Wednesday night taking questions and stuff from people. So uh, I think that's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, you know we're we're right in crunch time now. So let's do this. Yeah, this Wednesday, August twenty third, we're going to do a YouTube live. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Turn on that bell. You don't want to miss it. Live Q and A. I'm also going to be live on Instagram as well doing them both simultaneously, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, before we get into this show, guys, we're talking deep sleepers here for you. I actually want to plug 16-round plus draft app tool. It's a web-based app you open up during your draft. It's going to have everything laid out for you right in front of you guys. This is very easy to use. I encourage you to get it. This is separate from the solution, guys. It's an additional tool. It's a standalone tool on its own. It's going to give you insight on whether the players are in contract years, whether they're due for a bounce back. It's going to have a lot of insight on the top 250 players. Get the 16-round plus tool. I've linked it below. Guys, now is the time. Drafts are here, guys. This is an amazing tool that Jim created, and I've partnered up with him on. 16-round plus tool, guys, at thefantasyfootballaccounts.com. Under programs, we've also linked it below. And on top of the comments, get the plus tool now. You guys will be light years ahead of the competition. All right, Jim, I'm ready to dive into this. Now, the funny thing is with these six sleepers, we were talking about these guys in May. Nobody had any idea who these guys were. Now the Kinshipses are riding these players. I see them in the news. I see them in the headlines. Well, some people will argue and say, well, Joe, most of us don't draft in May. I get it. We talked about them in May, June, July. I ended up doing my main big draft July 4th. I was aware of them. They're on my team. Most of these guys we're going to mention here. But now they're starting to shine. And even though they're still starting to shine, Jim, the amazing thing is these guys are still ranked one guy's ranked 78th amongst running backs. Another guy's ranked 52nd. Another guy's ranked like 88th amongst running backs. These guys have, you know, kind of, they've already shined in preseason, showing and reassuring what we, you and I have talked about, and they're still being slept on. So this is remarkable. There's still great value. What do you think, Jim? I mean, these guys have so much upside. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah, <clears throat> easily. And, 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 you know, I've always talked about these late round flyers. If they don't work out, they're not hurting your team. Uh, you know that this is this is one of those things that uh, these are the guys that can that have the ability to significantly help your team this season um, if they work out. And if they don't, it doesn't matter. So it's like a zero risk play to take these players and add them to your team in a draft. So yeah, go for it. Take these guys. All right, let's start off with your first guy here. He's actually a tight end. I've actually got three running backs. I know you've got a tight end, a wide receiver, and another running uh, and a running back. So Jim's yeah, mixed yeah. it up. I, he's giving you some variety. I've got my sleepers at tight end. Everything is in the 16-round draft solution as well. Linked it below and the 16-round plus you get a lot of all that information. But uh, but yeah, I went running back, straight three running back sleepers. So Jim, why don't we start off with your first player here? And this is a tight end. Yeah, nice. so uh, my first uh, my first player, and and when it comes to tight ends, you know we did a we did a show about this, talking about the second year opportunity for tight ends, and how that's a big year for them to make a, a huge leap on the draft board, um, and and so most tight ends tend to break out in either their second or their third year, but but what I what I saw across the board was big increases in their usage going into their second year. So when we talk about this guy. He's he's playing for what's going to be a bad offense with a bad quarterback. And and because of that, this team's going to be behind the whole season. They're going to have to pass the ball a lot. And um, I also like to see a reduction in the target competition for the tight end. And this guy, I think, fits the bill. It's uh, Cade Otten 
of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Right. Now, last year, uh, he had a surprisingly strong rookie season. He yeah. averaged uh, four targets per game, which is, which is again, it's not startable from a fantasy football perspective. But the upside, and what I found was that Tight ends going into their second year tend to see a large increase in their volume, uh, usually on the order of about 80%, an 80% increase. Now, now that sounds like a lot, but a lot of times right. it's coming off of two targets or three targets, you know. But a four target with an 80% increase gets him up into the seven target range, you know, six to seven, right in that range. And right. that makes him a startable fantasy asset. That's an every week starter. And a tight end, a tight end that's going to place in the top 12. So um, right. uh, we got that situation. Also, uh, uh, the third wide receiver there went down with an injury. You know, obviously there's there's Mike Evans and there's Chris Godwin. Uh, but then it was um, uh, Russell Gage. Russell Gage is their third. Yeah. And uh, Russell Gage went down with an injury. So again, less target competition. He's going to be moved up on the pecking order. And I think he's going to see a lot of targets. He's the safety valve for a bad offense. So I think he's going to get, he's going to get a lot of targets. So I tend, I tend not even to look at that, that depth chart that far. I didn't think Russell Gage is that relevant, but yeah, definitely. I mean, they got Trey Palmer, David Moore, a bunch of other bottom feeders there, but I'm not even really concerned here about those guys getting the volume. So Kate Auden is in a good opportunity as a late round guy. You get him on your bench as your backup tight end after you got your safe tight end and you've got some upside there and you got some security as well in a position that's got so much uncertainty after Travis Kelsey. So Kate Auden and like Jim said, these second year tight ends tend to step up and Kate Auden has got the talent to do so. All right, my guy who's on everybody's radar, everyone kind of knows who he is now, but it's so funny because Jim, when we were talking about this guy back in May, nobody had any idea who he was. He went like, what, round seven, six, seven, he was drafted. And let's talk about him. The guy I'm talking about here that I absolutely love this year is Deuce Vaughn. Now, Deuce Vaughn, small guy, 5'5", 175 pounds. But this guy is a bulldog, Jim. Have you been seeing the highlights? Have you been watching? I gotta say, he looks good, man. I mean, he's he's a he's a tiny little guy, but he is fast and he is elusive. And man, he got a touchdown. <laughs> that was great to see. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm I, I like to go to Vegas. And one of the sayings in Vegas is deuces never loses. So uh, that's what I'm going to say with deuce here. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, the opportunity is there. There's not, you know, outside of Tony Pollard, who else is in this backfield? Nobody. And they need somebody in there that can do the short yardage. You know, a, a lot of people are, are just in his size. And, and I think, yeah. look, this guy is small enough that he could just hide behind the offensive line. The defensive players can't even see him until he's coming through the hole Uh I think uh, he can be effective and as a low to zero risk play at where he's going in draft boards. Uh, I'm all about it. I'll take a chance on him for sure. RB 78 Rojo's there. The other guys, there absolutely suck. And I'm not sold on Pollard being the guy. This is what people don't understand. People think that Pollard is his RB one. He's going to take over Zeke's role. This guy got hurt last year with Zeke carrying the load with 200 attempts. How do you think Pollard's going to come in and be the guy? He's been a backup for like four years. Now Deuce Vaughn, again, I'm not saying he's the workhorse, but he can be in college. He was. 293 attempts, guys. He had more scrimmage yards than by Jan Robinson over the past couple of years, okay? 5.3 yards per carry. Uh, I mean, this guy was getting, what, 1,500 yards, right? Plus 42 receptions last year in college, 49 receptions the year before, 18 touchdowns in 2021. This guy gets it done on the ground. He gets he gets that workhorse volume capability. He's very hard to tackle, low center of gravity, spin moves. It's like having a bulldog on the on the field, man. It's it's remarkable. And he's sitting as RB78 on the consensus, on the consheeps' rankings. When this becomes becomes a viable, when he becomes a viable um flex guy or becomes an RB2 with upside and he's getting that volume and Pollard gets hurt and they're using him more, people are like, I told you so. We told you Deuce Vaughn. They're gonna ride that train. But we were talking about him in in May. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be the be-all, end-all, but all I'm saying is I've got him on all of my rosters. I want to go on record saying Deuce Vaughn's on all my rosters. Win, lose, or draw, I'm in on Deuce Vaughn. I don't care. I'm riding him. It is what it is. Yeah, and and like I said, I think he's a great choice of where he's going in the draft right now. Very low-risk play. Um, uh, 
Uh, I think you can get them probably in the 15th round. I mean, it's, again, right at the end of your draft. Go ahead and just put this guy on your roster. Line mentality, guys. See things before they happen, all right? Right. There's the line roar. All right, Jim, you're up on the queue here. Who is your next deep sleeper? And it's so funny, though, before I get into this, it's like, these guys are super deep. Nobody knew who they were, but they're slowly getting up that ADP. That's why people say, why do you draft so early? It's because I have everybody before they break out because I see it before everybody else. Sorry, Jim, to interrupt. Who's your next guy? Yeah, yeah. And, and and this is the one guy that is like moving up like crazy right now. You know, he was a guy that I had been getting mostly in the last pick of every draft, uh, but that's not happening anymore. We've moved him up to the... 13th round, I think at this point, he's probably going to move yeah. up even more from there. Uh, he's getting a lot of buzz and it's not surprising to see why the guy is dynamic. Uh, he is really, really uh, lighting things on fire this past week in, in, in an 11 on 11 scrimmage. He scored three touchdowns, three. OK, so this guy, <laughs> this guy is is doing right. fantastic. The guy I'm talking about is Tank Dell, Nathaniel Dell. Uh, of the the Houston Texans and and I got to say I'm usually not interested at all in drafting wide receivers that are playing with a rookie quarterback because rookie quarterbacks are are not that good they they get a lot of interceptions a lot of turnovers they don't get as many touchdowns and it's it sort of kneecaps the the receivers on that team but I got to say I'm willing to absolutely take a chance on Dell this year uh, I think he's the number one. And upside for this guy, I see him as this year's Amon Ra. He's a slot receiver. He is basically a safety valve for uh, CJ Stroud. And I think they're going to be making connections all summer. So uh, I am all in on Tank Dell for sure. I want him in every team that I got. Yeah, absolutely. And again, <clears throat> you're looking at a guy who is in a position to succeed where they don't have a true wide receiver one. I mean, Mechie, we, we talked about it before the show. Not looking good. He's just not playing as much as, you know, he's just not, you don't hear much about him, right? Um, and then he, got, He's not there yet. He's not there yet. So, yeah. And then you look at CJ Stroud, who asked Tank Dell to be drafted. He actually wanted him. They're both young guys. Nico Collins, uh, ah, you know, he's always, uh, I don't get this Collins talk. He's not that good. Could be wrong, but I'm just, nah, you know, and then you got the old aging Robert Woods who's there as a decoy. Uh, Tank Dell is the guy. I mean, this is really starting to emerge now, and we're starting to see exactly what we were talking about. The gym initially brought up way back in May after the draft. All right. Yeah, and and if I could just say one more thing also, this past weekend in the, in the Houston preseason game, they didn't play him. You know why they didn't play him? Because they don't need to. They know yeah. what they got with this guy. They let all the other receivers play to kind of try to sort out who's going to be the number two and the number three on that team. They're fighting for scraps, and there's really not many scraps when it comes to a rookie quarterback. So so Dell is the guy you want from this team. I don't think anyone else is going to be able to do anything this year. Um, but uh, that, was, that was also a telling sign. I think it was after that scrimmage where he got three touchdowns. They're like, okay, right. we don't need to risk this guy to get injured in the so preseason. Guy. He's fine. He's our number one. We're good. You He's know, <laughs> very, very versatile too. Great hands, great route runner, ultra exciting. Make sure he's on just open roster. all the time. That's the thing. He's just gets wide open and fantastic. It's very exciting to see. And what's so exciting is that you're getting a potential wide receiver one with almost your last pick. Like this is why I'm saying there's so much depth at wide receiver Get those running backs early, okay? All right, let's keep on the de the tank train here. Uh, and there's so much news buzzing about this guy, but the guy I'm talking about here is Tank Bigsby, six foot, two hundred eight pounds, out of Auburn, sitting as RB fifty two right now. In college, five point four yards per carry. This guy was a beast. Uh, that we only had one one thousand yard rushing season. It was twenty twenty one. The guy is great talent, and we're seeing it in preseason. So I just just look up Tank Bigsby news, and you're seeing, man, Tank Bigsby's role could expand. You know, um, raving reviews, glowing reviews about Tank Bigsby. And what I've been telling you this entire offseason is fade ATN. He sucks. He's inconsistent. He's only played one season. He missed his entire first season. And when he did play the second season, his second season, which was kind of his rookie season because he missed the entire first season, he sucked. He had like a three point, he had multiple 3.2 point games, a bunch of five pointers, a point three pointer, very inconsistent. The only thing he has going for him is that he had that rapport with Lawrence, you know, for years. 
I'm not sold on him. I'm just not sold on ATN. Fade him. Get Bigsby. He's bigger. He's stronger. He runs harder. And he's great value. I can't believe he's sitting his RB52. And when this guy breaks out and takes that RB1 spot, or when ATN gets hurt, or when this guy just becomes a total viable flex player in RB2, the consensus will tell you, oh, we told you so. They won't go back and say this guy was RB58. They won't go back and say Deuce Vaughn was RB78. They just won't do it. They won't be held accountable. But I'm going to hold everybody accountable. And that's where the truth is, guys, 16 rounds. What do you think of Tank Bigsby looking good in preseason? Don't you agree? Oh, yeah. I mean, Tank Bigsby is one of my favorite running backs to draft past pick 100 in your draft. Um, I've been getting him in, in just about every draft of mine as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, he has been very impressive in the preseason, uh, very effective. And and that was, you know, when, when it comes to Etienne, I'm just getting a real Clyde Edwards Hilaire vibe off the guy. You know, I mean, yeah. he was uh, I, I mean, I, I I guess, you know, he was all right. He was like RB 18 last year. Right. Um, but he wasn't very effective in the passing game. Um, he wasn't effective on the goal line. He only had like five touchdowns or something like that. I, I don't have the stats in front of me, so I'm just guessing. Um, but I can really see that this is a situation where where um, Bigsby can really move in and take the high value touches away from Etienne. And and so I am all about that. Uh, I think he is a fantastic value at where he's going. Um, and Let's let's go. Just uh, just get up. them on your team. You need you need the tanks on your team. Get both yes. of these guys, and you can get like one in the twelfth and one in the eleventh. You know, I, I think that's about where the, these guys are going. Great, great places to get these guys. So, and be, being in sports and martial arts, I did MMA for a while. I remember there'd be like nicknames we would name certain fighters. They'd do it right. Like, there's a reason these guys were named Tank. Right. Like they, there's something they must have done in college or something that, you know, jumped out with the coaches or the staff or the other teammates. Like that guy's a tank. Like there's a reason they're called tank. Like Nathaniel sure. Dell is tank, you know, D tank Dell's real name, Nathaniel, but they call him tank. Right. So tank, right. Big, tank Dell, there's a reason the tank is a strong piece of machinery, Jim. I don't, I don't know about you, yeah. but these guys are going to be tanks. So yeah, I'm excited, man. I mean, a guy named tank ranked 52. You know, amongst running backs, I'm all in. Sign me up, <laughs> you know? All sure. right. Oh, I always love the great football names. And Tank Bigsby is just about as good of a football name as you can get for somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I like it. All right. You're moving on, Jim. Your next deep stash, fantasy football sleeper, deep sleeper, whatever you want to call it. Who's your next guy here? All right, so my next guy, he's he is moving up the draft boards, and it's because there's a lot of drama in the in the backfield of this team. But um, really, there is a seriously high probability that Josh Jacobs is not going to play this year. Uh, on, you know, he has not me, signed let his me franchise. What's that? Josh Jacobs is reporting back to team. I just heard this morning. Oh, he is. He That's is. Okay, but but still. All right. All right. Well. Um, I have been uh, one of the things with this is, is he's probably doing it because he doesn't have a lot of leverage. And that's, that's no. true. That's the case with a lot of these running backs, but I'm not liking the drama uh, amongst these uh, amongst running backs this year, when it comes to these poor contracts they've been getting. And uh, you know, I, I mean, Jacobs had a career season last year and they rewarded him with a one year franchise tag. Uh, right. You know, I think he deserves more than that. And I think that's a demotivator that, uh, you know, he to, to play as hard this year. Uh, I also think that the volume that Jacobs got last year, where he got over 400 opportunities with the ball, it was like 300, 330 touches. And then he also got like 70 or 80 targets yeah. um, that wears on the human body. And there's not many humans that can take that sort of punishment. Derrick Henry can take that kind of punishment and keep going. But I don't think Josh Jacobs is a Derrick Henry type of player. He's not. Yeah, he's and, not. and we've seen lots of cases where players coming off of that sort of volume uh, crash and burn the next year. And case in point is Jonathan Taylor last year. Two seasons ago, Jonathan Taylor went over the 400 opportunity threshold, had a great year. You know, I, I think he was the RB1. He was, a, you know, it was a fantastic season for him. He was a league winner. 
But then last year he comes back and he sucked. He was injured all the time. He couldn't play. He wasn't effective. And I think it's just because all that punishment he took the year before just w- was catching up with him. And I can see the exact same thing happening with Josh Jacobs this year, where he's just not able to do it. He's not able to maintain. And so who is playing behind Josh Jacobs but Zamir White? Right. And Zamir White has been getting all the work in the preseason, yes. all the work in training camp because Josh Jacobs hasn't been there. And, and, uh, you know, I can see a very, very high probability that uh, Josh Jacobs misses a significant amount of time this year. He's just not going to he's not going to be able to maintain himself. And with that, the opportunity goes to Zamir White. This is a guy going super late in drafts. He's still going like 13th, 14th round. Um, And I think he's absolutely worth a stash on your bench to see what happens with Jacobs, because I I am I think. I think Jacobs is just going to fall apart this year. I just think he's going to be a complete bust. And um, this is be this is going to be the guy that picks up the pieces. So grab him. Get him on your team. Zamir White, 10 rushes, 40 yards, 4, four yards per carry, 10, 10, uh, 10 yards was his long one. Uh, looked okay in preseason. Uh, going back to Tank Dell, sorry, I didn't, I didn't say this, 5.4 yards per carry, 13 rushes, 70 yards. Back on Tank Dell. Zamir White doing well, too, as well. These guys are shining. I know it's preseason. I don't want to give it too much weight, but they are looking pretty good in preseason. Again, Josh Jacobs looking at a $10 million type uh, franchise tender uh, tag and plus uh, possibly, I think, a $2 million uh, incentives uh, type deal. Again, from what I'm hearing now, just again, recently, um, that he's going to be reporting to camp uh, before week one. He should be there. But again, still some uncertainty, a little disgruntled. But realizing that he's just not that good. He had a big year last year. The years prior just never was sensational, especially from a fantasy perspective. I used to get get him in the third round uh, along with David Montgomery, third to fourth round guy. All of a sudden, he's jumped up after one good year where everything kind of worked in his favor. I don't think it works that way this year. And uh, I think he realizes that. So take what you can get. Saquon, Saquon took it. You're not better than Saquon. Um, I don't want to hear any crying. All right. And he's a big <laughs> whiner. He's the guy that wanted to box me. And it looks like if he want, if he sits out, he's gonna end up boxing me. So um, I don't know if you saw I did a I did a video yesterday of me uh out on do work in pads. Did you see it on my Instagram, Jim? I don't yes, know. Yes, yes, I did see that. Yes. The eye of the tiger here. There you go. There we go. Here there we There you go. go, man. No mercy. Pop, pop. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Rocky Balboa here. See that, Jim? That's very what, nice. That's what Josh Jacobs has got coming for him if he sits. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first session. Imagine if I do a bunch of sessions, it's actually getting shaped. My shoulders are still sore from that. Okay. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, my next guy here, I absolutely love Jim. Absolutely love as like a last round pick. People aren't even talking about him. The guy is Sean Tucker. Okay. Why do I like him? He's out of Syracuse. Now, this guy went undrafted. Apparently, he had some uh, heart issue. Uh, I won't go into the details of the medical stuff. Uh, Something was bothering him with his heart. Uh, Apparently, that kind of hindered scouts as he moved towards the draft. But this guy was a first-team All-American and a Heinzman contender, guys. That's how good Sean Tucker was in college. His numbers looked good as well, 206 attempts. Over 1,000 yards, 5.1 yards per carry. He got it done in the receiving game. He's a really good running back. 5'10", 210 pounds. In preseason, seven rushes, 5.3 yards per carry. Ran for 37 yards in preseason. Got a little bit of light. Listen, I'm not sold on White there. Who's it? Rashad White there. What has he done? Again, this is an opportunity for Sean Tucker, who's got a chip on his shoulder. Like I said, could have been a Heisman contender was a really good running back in college was kind of like shafted a little bit. I mean, he really went for a value for the, they got a gem with this guy. He is ultra strong, ultra fast. And I really think that this guy could really shine there because again, I'm not sold on white. I don't think he's that good. And the can sheeps is all drafting white. I don't know. I think he's coming off rounds like, Six to eight ish, give or yeah, take six or seven. Yeah, yeah, like that. Right. I, I'm not sold. I'm not, I have no stock in white, not sold on him. And this is where we got situations where not this guy, but that guy. When you look at you know, ATN, not him, give me Bigsby, white, not him, give me Tucker. These guys can supersede their guys above them on the depth chart. And the guys above them on the depth chart just have one thing ahead of them more time and rapport with the team. These guys can emerge if given the opportunity. Look out, Sean Tucker, last round pick, pick him up. 
Yeah, and I, and I, uh, I just uh, hate the backfield of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, uh, besides Rashad White, who's awful, uh, Chase Edmonds is the is also on that backfield. Yeah. I'm like, Sean Tucker can absolutely come in and beat both these guys to be the yeah. starter on this team, and and he just needs the opportunity. I think he's going to get it. And yeah, I mean, as far as all these guys, I think this guy is going just about as late as anybody uh, I'm in a draft right now where I'm heading into my 19th round pick and he's on the board. I'm going to wow. grab him in the 19th round, you know? And, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's the thing, like if he doesn't work out, who cares, right? <laughs> he's so cheap. Who cares? But if he does work out, wow, that is amazing. Cause if you can get an every week starter out of someone like Sean Tucker, that is one of the ways to win your league, man. That's a great, that's a great feeling. Greatest feeling in the world is that guy that you picked up after the 10th round that becomes an every week starter for you. And that's what we're looking for. And I think he could do it, man. I mean, I just, I got no faith in Rashad white at, <laughs> to I mean, be able to do anything this year. So Jim, Jim, we're sitting here, August 21st, Sean Tucker, who could be the RB one on his team on the box could be the RB one. Cause I'm not sold on white. He's sitting as RB 88 on the consensus rankings. This is why Randy yeah. won't work. He could be an RB one on his team. He's, he's RB 88 on the sheep rankings. It's ludicrous. Right. brother. Ludicrous. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and the instant I saw that he, he, uh, because he didn't even get drafted. He, he, he yeah. walked on and got signed, uh, by the bucks after the draft Deal. and, and, Stole uh, him. So he, you know, he talk about a guy that has a chip on his shoulder. This is a guy that has a chip on his shoulder. So uh, I, I think he's got something to prove, and I think he's going to prove it this year. I think he's going to he's going to take this backfield. So. Absolutely, it could very well happen. And again, you pay nothing to get him, so who cares? <laughs> All right, right, right. <clears throat> All right, Jim, that's it, man. Guys, listen, grab the sixteen round plus tool right now. We've linked it here below. Secure the plus to tool, secure the championship. I can't even talk. I'm so excited. Guys, super <laughs> <laughs> guys, 16 rounds plus tool. Grab it. We've linked it below. It's going to give you a massive advantage over the competition. Jim, great episode. We're talking fantasy football sleepers 2023, and we went deep today. And again, this might have sounded a little more deep if we were talking in May. But now people are starting to wake up to it, right? They're starting to see flashes of these guys. But for us, and they're still going to be afraid of them. But for us, we're like, okay, we've already talked about him. We felt good about him. This is kind of confirming our our intuitions here. So I'm excited about this, Jim. This is going to be a great year. And uh, yeah, fantasy football is here, guys. Get ready for your draft. And we're going to keep rolling out the content daily. So turn on the bell and click subscribe. Thanks, Jim. Thank you very much, Counselor. Have a great week, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you on Wednesday. Join we'll us on Wednesday night. We'll be live here. Turn on the bell. We'll talk soon. Yeah.